Are you ready for an all new installment of State Champs Esports? This week we've got wall to wall League of Legends highlights. So buckle in because our show starts right now. Welcome and thanks for watching. I'm your host, Candace, and this week we'll have all four matches from our first Spring League of Legends tournament, which went down this past weekend. Before we get to that, let me thank Lawrence Tech, who is currently building their first ever varsity esports team. They will start competition this fall, and head coach Danielle Sarikis is recruiting players. If you're interested, visit LTU Athletics and go to their Recruit Yourself link. We also want to give a huge shout out to Hungry Howies, who has been a sponsor of our show and tournaments from the very beginning. Our first playoff match was between Carmel High School and Northville's JV squad. We started the first match with some pre-level headed gameplay, picking off minions, no invasions quite yet. Carmel's Tristana stuns the enemy Samira, securing a kill and then shortly after getting a double kill on Northville's Rel with the assistance of Carmel's Leona, giving them room to take out Northville's bot lane turret. A slugfest above mid lane. We see both teams throwing alts out as they get clustered, but Carmel comes on top with a 4 for 1 kill, clearing the mid lane. As Carmel pushes in and takes the final tower, both teams clash. Northville's Rel trying to ult, but not before Carmel's Annie throws hers out, dealing some massive AoE damage and clearing out Northville's fighters letting them push in and destroy the Northville Nexus. Only two minutes in a match two, and we already have a kill. Almost a double kill as Carmel's Leona and Caitlyn kill Northville's Tristana in an attempt to chase down their Blitzcrank. Northville makes some pretty methodical plays ganking Carmel's Ivern near bot lane, trying to take apart Carmel one by one here. Out he has no flash. He's dead. Oh, no flash with three players all converging down on him. This Match 2 takes the volatility of bot lane from match 1 and really spreads it out. Super aggressive and chaotic plays in all lanes this match. Fighting on from both sides of the map, all over the place, all at the same time. Carmel sets up a tower dive with Annie hiding in the bushes, pulling off a pincer attack. They're able to kill 2 here and clear the tower in bottom lane. Carmel's team pushes into Northville's HQ. Carmel's Caitlyn finishing off and getting a pentakill not once but twice helping the rest of the team focus fire the Nexus and winning the quarterfinals. Carmel will move on to the next round. For the oh double Penta within about two <laughs> minutes on that time. You do not see that every day. Oh my and god. PG as the Nexus falls. In the semifinals, Northville's varsity team took on last year's winners from Seaholm High School. Seaholm stays on the offensive, taking the dragon, several turrets, and pushing the top lane all the way back to the last tower. Also, providing double the farm in the jungle on the blue side as they're able to get both the red side and. Northville rushes in with its whole team to push back Seaholm and get control of the Baron and Dragon before they spawn. But Seaholm Shen, throwing out a group taunt and alt, was able to team wipe Northville with the help of Yone. Flashing in with some more CC. Shen going in, getting a four man taunt, followed up by the Swain ultimate, doing tons of damage, striking them down. We see Yone diving on the back line, picking up that Seraphine kill, and then going in to finish off the rest of the team. Only Malzahar is alive still, being forced slowed by the Swain W, and that is a double kill for the Swain. We see Seaholm throwing a final offensive, resulting in a win for the first game. Inhibitor with, with Baron. <laughs> with Baron. This is, uh, it, this should, it could be the end of the game here if we see a uh, decent gauge from the Yone going in. Shed all following through Hecker Malt going in. Our second round starts off pretty tame with fighting back and forth on both sides. Northville's Neko won't give up the middle lane even this early, killing Seaholm's Cassiopeia. Northville's able to secure a few kills and clear the top and bottom lane's initial tower. Both teams fight over the dragon, Seaholm really pushing to take it. Northville, however, with their recent very buff Skarnir, Erdot, and Aphelios, party wipes Seaholm and slayed the dragon. Northville charges in having just got their Baron buff, with a huge slug festival it's being thrown out but Northville comes out on top, breaking the Nexus off camera. Both teams open up our third match with caution, testing each other, instead of going for any serious farms. 
Northward really hoping to put a limit on things now has two dragons. Northville pushes in. With their buffs, they are able to rapidly take out turrets and quickly take out the Nexus, winning this match and progressing to the finals. Into the Nexus. Fantastic game plan here from Northville. You have to give them credit. Hey guys, Harris here. This week, we're looking at Hidden Field's hand-drawn horror game, Mundown. Mundown came out on March 16th with its unique style and slow burn horror. It came out to some pretty good reviews, but for me, it was kind of a mixed bag. Let's talk about why. You take the role of Curtin, an orphan who was raised by his grandfather, having just received notice that his grandfather died in a short, vague letter from a priest where he lived in Mundown. The story takes you there as you investigate the mysterious way your grandfather died and the implication of it on the village itself. The story is pretty compelling, and while the characters don't talk a lot, when they do, it's meaningful, impactful, and layered with dark implications and defeat. While the story is great, the pacing of it and the game is definitely a bit slower. When things are happening and you're involved, you can definitely feel the impact. But the in-between parts, sometimes doing menial tasks, are where I think the story gets really bogged down. The visuals are really where the game excels. Everything is pencil and ink drawn animation, with the ambiance clearly drawing from eldritch horrors like The Lighthouse. The ominous pressure you feel within the game, and the way everything is drawn and animated, is absolutely palpable. When you look at the mirrors through doorways, the camera zooms in and lingers there. With paintings, you can hear Curtin imagining the sounds. Regardless, the slow zoom in combined with Curtin's heartbeat is downright terrifying. In this one scene, you stare into a mirror, and a room appears with someone standing there, and I almost couldn't look. The scenery of sloping hills, mountains, and valleys, both during the day and during hellish nightmares, look amazing. With the pencil and graffiti style, these maps are definitely fun to explore. However, with how the clues and puzzles are spread out, it definitely slows the game down. Small, and I do mean small, hints and clues are hidden in sometimes the most unclue like areas and running to every house, nook, and cranny within each area definitely gets dry. Not to say we should be directed where to go, but I think there could be some improvements made there. Parts of the map you can accidentally bug through. I did this thinking it was how you get past a blocked path, and it let me walk over a bridge that was broken, resulting in scenes where events that were supposed to happen didn't, or happened before I was in the actual scene itself. The enemy designs are definitely creepy, haymen and strange beekeepers that spawn constantly, but this is definitely overshadowed when the enemies bug out. Sometimes after hitting them with your car or pitchfork, they'll keep spawning or just go still altogether. Other times the enemy can hit you through the car, getting through the windshield somehow. Mundown is a fresh take on slow burn horrors with fantastic visuals, but the bugs and the pacing really put a damper on the game for me. The game is supposed to only be about 10 hours long, isn't super expensive, but it feels a lot longer and I felt myself getting frustrated pretty often. I'd say give the game a few months to get some patches, and when you do get it, go into it knowing that you're going to be in for kind of a slow burn. In the second semi-final match, Troy High School faced Carmel to see who would advance to the championship. In our semifinals game, we've got Game 1 of Troy High School versus Carmel High School. A few minutes in, both teams are duking out in the jungle. Troy is eventually pushed back, and Carmel's Jinx cleaning up with three kills. Flashes into the rocket still. That's going to be a kill over to Jinx again, and it's 3-0. Troy takes out the first dragon, and we can see both teams playing pretty aggressively, fighting each other and diving across all the lanes. Troy plays strategically and aggressively, destroying several towers, and when going for the next dragon, Team White's Carmel with a combo of ultimates. That Carmel as they get absolutely destroyed, and that's just like we talked about in Champ Select, a full team ace for Troy. With one final push, Troy ignores the inhibitor, going for a team wipe, smashing the Nexus and winning the first round. I have nothing but a thrush and a dream. He's just gonna sit and face. He wants no part of it. Save his KDA. Match 2 has a bit of a slower start as both teams focus on farming and testing each other a bit. Carmel pushes for the dragon, not getting much opposition from Troy. 
Troy makes a comeback, showcased with this engagement, overtaking Carmel in terms of kills and towers. May live. The Hecarim goes in again and still is almost killed. We have another fight moving. Troy pushes through the top lane, gets a full team wipe, but takes out the Nexus for the win. Troy High School moves into our finals. So that's going to be a two, or no, that's going to be a one for three trade. Up, oh, yeah. flashed that's on. That's going to be a here. dead Lucian. Beautiful flash Q. Looks like it could be game. We have supers running down mid. And Troy's going to look to end it here. For our final match of the show, we've got Northville facing Troy for the championship. Hi, I'm Ethan Avery, and let's take a look at some League of Legends action from the finals of our state champs tournament where Troy took on Northville. Troy will be able to take this drag, and looks like they're just going to commit over to trying to kill the Silas, going back in, picking up the Rakan, alt off onto the Silas by the Mordekaiser, and they're going to trade kills, and they're going to take Dragon. Then, after Troy took their third trick, we got more action bot side. Another play bot, and it looks like Silas is here to help out his teammate, gonna get ulted out, but I don't think it matters. Silas is just destroying the entire team, 5-1 now, and Mordekaiser is able to pick up a kill over to the Olaf, and the Thresh is just holding down this Mordekaiser, it's not gonna matter. And the solo laners of Troy would continue to push their leads, claiming victory in game one. Okay, game two, and Viego would get fed early for Troy. Instead of disengaging after seeing the Skarner, he just goes in and commits, and that is absolutely crazy. Looks like they're gonna continue this dive. Noon is gonna flash out with one HP, and oh my god, that turned so quickly. And Viego would look to use that lead on this dive bot. But look, Nunu's here, Snowball's coming in, Thresh has nothing, and that's going to be a kill over onto the Thresh. And then the Skarner ulting in, and boom, four people are instantly bought for Troy, and that's going to be a double kill. In the end, Northville gave it their all, but Troy emerged victorious. And here is probably the end of the game fight, but a huge Azir ult. Yep, huge Azir ult, the Vayne is just left to auto attack, she is melting the tanks. She's going to get taken out by Tower. Almost takes out the Garen. That's going to be a, a flash ult from the Aphelios. I'm not sure you want to do that. Nunu's going to go in. A big AP ultimate coming out. Chunking down everyone. He's going to get all his HP back from the Chomp. And that is going to be a ace for Troy. Congratulations once again to Troy for winning the tournament. That's it for this week. On our next show, we'll start up our second Spring League of Legends tournament. There's still time to sign up your team for both the second and the third tournaments, so register at statechampsesports.net. And finally, make sure to subscribe to our new podcast, Gamers Unlimited, on all major platforms. Thanks again for watching, and remember to please stay safe out there.